TMZ is just reporting uh, a few minutes ago that Lincoln Park lead singer Chester Bennington has been found dead. According to TMZ.com, uh, it was suicide by hanging. Wow. Yeah, so uh, news rolling in today that Chester Bennington uh, committed suicide at his home, uh, hung himself. They found him today. And look, the Lincoln Park show in Cincinnati is not happening. We'll just put that out there, obviously. But look, we've always been a radio station and and the family and friends that work here. And we've always been real honest and been straight up. And, and you know, how Fish and you and I, we've talked and it's like, we put it out there like, what do, what do our listeners want today from this? Do we want to uh, do we want to remember, you know, Chester Bennington and the Lincoln Park music that he was a part of? We definitely do not want to glorify this action. Um, but I will put this out there. I'm angry. Okay. I, am, I am angry that he did this. I am angry because he had six kids. I'm angry that he's sending a message out there that this is okay. It is not. There are people your age, my age, and kids and that are on the edge of being unhinged, and this is saying that this is all right. Well, I'm here to say this is not okay. It is not okay to take your life. What a selfish dick move. It's horrible, and I feel horrible because there's torment in this guy and that none of us will understand completely. He will be the only one that would understand that, and so I get it, but I'm angry now because it's like all these people that are left in the wreckage of like, why did you do that? Why would you do this? Could it, and I'm, I'm just going to insert this. I think you're trying to justify, you're trying to rationalize the irrational. <laughs> yeah. And I'm that's completely irrational 24 uh, No. <laughs> his, his, uh, at least to us, his decision to, to take his life is totally irrational. You yeah. can't apply rational thought to that, so you shouldn't even try. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, and, and, and additionally to that, I, 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 one of the best essayists that exist on planet Earth is a guy by the name of, of David Sedaris, and he wrote a great essay that put, you know, uh, suicide, just how horrible it is, into terms. And uh, when his sister Tiffany passed away, and he wrote uh, he wrote an essay about it, and he said one thing that stuck with me. He said, um, uh, "Suicide doesn't get rid of problems; it just passes them on to other people." Exactly right. And uh, and uh, not necessarily, Ronnie, a common thing to happen, but something that does happen is copycats. And mm-hmm. we certainly need to be aware of that. Um, and I'm just going to put this information out there. I would encourage you guys, if you know somebody that struggles with depression, suicidal thoughts, reach out to them. You don't have to make a big deal about it, I don't think. You know, just be like, hey, man, how you doing? Yep. You know, it can be that simple. Um, but if you yourself are struggling, uh, if you care to talk to somebody who can help you, can help you, this is established this can help um if you care to text you can text the word connect to 741741 uh if you want to speak to somebody locally uh 614-221-5545 uh or if you want to speak anonymously to somebody nationally uh 1-800-273-8255 because it's senseless and there's absolutely no reason to make a senseless situation even worse I mean, when when we come off the, uh, we're all still reeling from Chris Cornell, and and there's the discussion of the fact that he was he had overtaken his depression meds, his his medications, and and it wasn't really him; it was something he would have not n- normally done. And then Chester Bennington apparently clearly was like, "I'm just doing this." Mm-hmm. I mean, and there's all that mixture of emotions well, in between. You, 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 again, you don't know. You you're don't trying. Know. You're trying to apply thought right. process to something that you'll never know. Right. I mean, and it's just, it's just, it's just such a crappy message. I mean, um, I, I mean, I, I get concerned for people that I've never met that I know are struggling, and I worry that they're going to take this as a sign that it's all right. And I just uh, I, want it to be known that it's not okay. It's certainly a message, but I don't think it's an intentional message on his part. I don't believe that. I don't. I, I've, you know, as a person, my my cousin committed suicide. You know, and you can't sit there and spend time trying to rationalize what they were thinking because right. it's just a waste of time and you wonder and look i'm t- i'm doing it again but you wonder like if there was a point where uh, he when he was in that moment if it was like god i want to take this back i don't want to do this you know you think about it yeah. that's that's what i think about uh-huh. uh friends that i've known that have committed suicide i think about that all the time when when i think of them i think god did they just want to take it back like yeah. Um, but but there is also here to Newber the crisis text line in Ohio. Mm-hmm. You can text for hope. That is the number four and the word hope 
to 741741. Right. Um, and the people that can use this, anyone should feel free to text for hope to 741741 for help. It serves all ages. Uh, that is the crisis text line here in Ohio. Uh, mental health addiction services, they're here to help. We can talk a little bit more about this and uh, and we're obviously free to take your text here uh, the computer my computer career dot edu text line is open at 99 700 of course also 821 99 70 we want to kind of hear what you what you're thinking today Chester Bennington committing suicide the age of 41 uh, hanged himself found today in his California home you are rock station 99 7 the blitz Ronnie Hunter joined with Nuber uh, you know just reeling over the fact that Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park took his life this morning, and uh, we have just decided that we're just going to put it right out there. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I think as it's indicated over at 99700, people appreciate the honesty because it is it's just that it's honesty. Yeah. You know, we're not we're not saying we know everything. No. We're expressing honest emotion and trying to work through that. Mm-hmm. And I, I think talking through it because it is on the surface, utterly senseless. You like it's just it it didn't need to happen. It shouldn't have happened, and it's perfectly reasonable to be be angry about something like this. Yeah, and that was like the first emotion I had. I mean, when when we found out about Chris Cornell, and somebody mentioned that somebody said, you know, when Chris Cornell died, it was more of a oh my gosh, you know, my heart and everything because he committed suicide too. Now with Chester Bennington, it's angry. I think I'm kind of now in the middle of it. It's like well, we lost one person to suicide that was important in our lives because of. What he gave us, right? And now, now here's another one, which coincidentally was on Chris Cornell's birthday. Story is that they were friends and all that. We don't know if that was a fact right. or like if that, if it was a reason. I'm learning more about your God. I I feel like I should be getting at least a master's degree for breaking this down with you today. But th- that you brought up a great point. Um, like psychologically, when's it going to stop? Right. And you mentioned copycat stuff. Yeah. Like, who's next? I don't want there to be a next because I'm pissed right now. Like, I'm I'm angry because of the message that it's sending. And, I mean, you know, like, I don't even know how to put it. So we talked earlier about um, about the fact that you, you can't rationalize it no. because you can't. Uh, we've got a lot of text here. Somebody said, my mother committed suicide in December. It's not rational thinking. They aren't thinking rationally. Oh, it just refreshed. Sorry. But they leave behind their suffering for us to now carry. Um, I lost it when Ronnie said she wonders if they wish they could take it back as they're going. I wonder that and it will always and I will always wonder that I will never understand that feeling. But it breaks my heart that someone is suffering so deeply that they feel that it is the only way to stop the pain. Exactly. I, 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 I am learning a lot over here just talking to you about this Mm because a few minutes ago I was kind of off put by the fact you said I am so angry about this right now I did not understand that I'm starting to understand that and and it's it's I'm not saying it's it's necessarily I don't think it's healthy if I'm gonna go out on a limb and go in that direction but I think it's honest yeah you know yeah I mean so that's where you gotta start it's like it's like okay one and now two Right. You know what How I mean? Many, yeah, when, like at what point at what point is this going to end? And and the one thing that I guess the, the the thing that I'm angry about is the fact that he had six kids and two wives obviously. Yeah. Uh, but but the message that's being sent to people uh, out there that might be considering it, it's not okay. Like you know, it's going to sound real trite to say it, but whoever is listening right now, you you're important. You are important to somebody out there. You are important. I don't even know you, but you're important to me. So don't even like think about it. Like don't even make me go there. Mm. I mean, the thought of taking your life is just, just don't do it. Like, come on, really? You know, and you get people that are in, in the eye of so many and then they, they, they commit such a selfish act. And people are also saying on our text line, you know, they, he wasn't thinking. He wasn't, it wasn't a selfish thing because he wasn't thinking of right. that. Right. And I get it, but but it's but it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is cuz we're all now left with the wreckage people that didn't even know him are being influenced by him taking his life and the people that were directly connected to him are now affected and it's just not a good message to send and it's not about face or any of that. It's about the fact that he's no longer here. Mm-hmm. And it's affecting so many people. 
It is, and 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 we're certainly not experts in this subject. We're just speaking honestly. We're speaking yeah. from the heart, uh, and you know, people who have you know either friends or family have committed suicide. You know, we're speaking honestly, and and there certainly are people who are far more helpful on this topic uh, that you can reach out to. All these services, by the way, are free. Um, specifically, the National Suicide uh, Helpline is one eight hundred two seven three eighty two fifty five. If you choose to uh, text. Um, you can just text the word connect to 741 741 or Ryan, did you say four hope the number four H O P E? Yep. The crisis text line in Ohio text the number four, the word hope to 741 741, the Ohio department of mental health and addiction services. They are there. Um, and anybody, anybody can call that it's all ages, uh, text coming into us, by the way, uh, somebody said, uh, it seems like it's something that has been on his mind for a while. Aside from the screaming style of vocals, some of the lyrics, uh, here's the track list from their new album. Didn't think about this. One more light. Nobody can save me. Good goodbye. Talking to myself. Battles. Symphony. Invisible. Heavy sorrow for now. Halfway. Right. One more light. Sharp edges. I mean, there's just all that wow. going on. Well, um, and 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 there uh, rarely do these things happen without any type of signs ahead of time. So certainly, again, reach out to people that you know struggle with this stuff. It cannot. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can just be like, "Hey, you cool? Everything fine?" It'll take you two seconds, and it might uh, it might help them. And you know, there's there's things that you and I were actually talking off air a moment ago about how. Generally in life, there are people, most everybody kind of might think, what, what would it be like if I wasn't here? But, mm. but there's a small percentage of people that actually, like you said, when you start to plan it out, when yeah. you start to think, okay, well, how am I going to do this? When am I going to do it? That is when, like you mentioned, that is when you need to address it and you need to call someone. Yeah. Uh, you need to, and, and you know, there are people, there are people that are down that never show signs of depression and, um, Outwardly, yeah. Outwardly, and and they will and they will take their life, and it just shocks everybody around them. Hmm. Uh, we actually do uh, we do some stuff with a local attorney company, and one of those guys took his life, and it just shocked everyone. Nobody knew. Yeah, uh, we did not see it coming. His friends and his family were just like, "Wow," you know, and uh, and and that's what really happens. I mean, it's like there are people that are blatantly out there, like you go, "Wow, this guy." There's a timeline on this dude, like he. Hmm. And then there are people that you don't even see it coming. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, we're literally just talking right now. Yeah, I mean, we're talking off the But I mean, again, all we can do is be honest because I, I understand now where you're coming from as far as like first Chris, now Chester. Are we not learning our lesson? Right. You know? Right. And it's like, you but said, it's, it's, I don't think it operates in those terms. You it, know, it's not a binary solution to the situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it just... Not talking about it isn't going to help anything. We know right. that much. And that and that's important. I mean, you know, you've mentioned also, noobs, like we're not we don't we're not counselors. We're no. not we're just affected by it like everybody else. And I think that it's I think, you know, it goes back for me and many people It goes back to, you know, uh, Kurt Cobain. I mean, I remember being in this air studio and how fish walking in here saying, did you see the news? And I said, yes, I just, I just read mm. how we, how do we address this? I think that was the first one, at least within our generation, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the first one within our genre that was just like, what? Yeah. I mean, I remember being in this room, having to break the news that Kurt Cobain had killed himself. And it was just like, I was just spinning. I didn't yeah. even know what to say or how to say it. And, and the outpouring of emotion was clear that it was affecting so many people. And, and from that day to, to this, you know, why? Who's next? Like, don't. Just don't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it just, it's a, a horrible situation that can be made much worse uh, by somebody, again, trying to, to copycat for whatever reason. I can't, I can't put my mind in that place where there would be a logical reason to do that. But I'm lucky enough not to suffer from depression. So, right. I, I, again... Please reach out to somebody if you're feeling uh, despondent. Crisis text hotline. Uh, text the number four, the word hope, 
to 741741. That is the Mental Health Addiction Services here in Ohio. Uh, and, you know, it is a matter, like you said, too, I keep going back to things you're saying because it's really sticking in my in my crawl. But when you know somebody that you feel or you see is suffering somehow, some way, reach out. You know, and this goes beyond military, and, and I talk about that a lot, like PTSD and stuff. Yeah. It is important that you reach out to people just, hey, brother, what's up? What's up, sister? How are you? Mm-hmm. You don't have to be military to, to be suffering. No. Uh, it's a general thing in life. People suffer from bipolar and all of this. And, and trauma happens in all forms. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chester was a sexual uh, assault survivor. Yeah. You know? You don't, and maybe there was no uh, no trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, you just don't know. That's why it can never hurt to just check in on somebody. Yep, it could be a matter of uh, just that one day somebody pushes your button, uh, jumps on that last exposed nerve, and you're just like, "Well, done. Yeah. I'm out." So anyway, um, I know everybody's still kind of figuring it out, uh, trying to wrap their head around it. Well, we can't. So we're just going <laughs> to we're just gonna no. roll, roll with the waves with you this afternoon. I'm going to get a little music in because I, I kind of need that right now. Um, but please hit us up on our text lines at 99700. You can call us at 821-99700. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, Nuber and I are going to be here for the afternoon for at least another couple of hours just, ta- just talking about it, really, right? Uh, why not? Okay. Uh, Nuber stuck around a little bit here as we kind of... I don't know, reeling over Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park, uh, taking his life today. We found him uh, this morning in his home, had hanged himself, and, and we're just kind of, we're just going through the motions and the emotions with you, uh, because that's what we do. And there's a lot <laughs> happening off the air, you know, while the music's playing, that we're talking, we're sharing stories. And yeah. I think... I think what we're doing, Ronnie, is applicable to anybody out there. Yeah. For you know, sure. whether you suffer from depression, whether you don't. You or know, an experience that has put you in a place where you feel like, you know, you just need to just not be here anymore. Right. You know. Right. And 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 it in in by doing this and hanging out with you today and what is an awful circumstance, I feel like I'm learning. You yeah. know, I'm learning about things mm-hmm. and 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 again, it's totally irrational. Totally irrational. And that's what we're, the more we talk, that's the more I'm coming to is like, you can't even begin to know what was going on in his head. So you shouldn't even try. Right. And, and how many people like you and like me, day to day, we're kind of like, oh, suicide. No, no way. Not going to happen. Yeah. But when you really get real with yourself, I think at, at some point, everybody has had a moment where they felt really like, oh, you know, you can fake it. Yeah, well, I, I think what you're saying is, is just you, you see, you feel the futility of, of existence, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and people have for for generations, way before us. Um, but I think where it, it kind of branches off and it can go horribly awry is if you are uh, predisposed to depressive issues, you know, that for whatever divine weird twist of fate i'm not thankfully yeah there's you know there are a lot of things that could just be like we said before somebody might take their life because they are going through an emotional issue or it could be just something random that comes out of nowhere Uh, their medications could get mixed up and they're doing something like taking their life which they wouldn't have normally done there's so many things you could be affected by something that's in your life as you and i were talking off air i had a i had something going on uh a few years ago that I was in a place where it was like, wow, you know, how do I get out of this? Mm-hmm. How do I get out of this? Does any, is anybody going to care? Mm-hmm. And, um, um, this is about as real. This is Ronnie Hunter. We're talking about. <laughs> this is about as real as it's going to get, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, I mean, you are you're beloved by everyone. Everybody's texting and telling every, telling us how much they're appreciating this conversation. So this is coming from Ronnie Hunter. So there are there are times that even so even people like me, there are times you know where you get to a place where you're just kind of like, wow, and you feel like there's nobody there, mm-hmm. you know, and and you have to really. You have to really get in your own head and talk yourself out of stuff. Mm. And and while I never went as far as Chester, 
I think a lot of people get to a place where it's like, oh, I just can't take this anymore. Yeah. And what do you do? And this is why these crisis hotlines are available and all that stuff. I mean, even I was in a place back then where I felt like there was really nobody I could talk to. Right. And that's, but, but that, that's not true. That is the that was the part when you said that to me off the air that really bothered me. Yeah. And it's not true. And And I think a person can get in their own head so deeply that they feel like they're in this little dark room in their head. And. Mm. And they don't, they feel like there isn't anyone there. But really, there is. There is. I mean, look at, look at my world. I'm surrounded by awesome, loving people. Mm -hmm. But in in a moment of darkness, you don't feel that. You don't know that. Right. And, and, and if, if I had gone as far as Chester, that would have sucked. Like, what an, what an asinine, selfish move, you know? And I don't think I ever got quite there, but it was a, it was just a dark place. It was horrible. And, and I couldn't have possibly done that to my family or anything. And and the situation I was in, I wasn't the problem. This other person was the issue. Mm-hmm. And his demons were my issue mm-hmm. because they were his demons, not mine. And so that was kind of the problem. And I had to get I had to get away from that. And then after that I was like, okay. And then even after I still sort of suffered with like a post traumatic thing. And mm-hmm. it, sometimes it affects me still. But listen. Life is good, and I have a lot of wonderful, loving people around me. You know, the the people here are my family. You are my family, my family, you know. And so, you know, I, there's just, there's always an answer, and suicide is not it. I will just say that, like, mm-hmm. suicide is not it. While we started this conversation early, and I was like, I'm angry, I'm still angry that he did this. And I think it's because of the message that's being sent. Right. To people that could be at an on the edge, yeah, and it's, that are susceptible to yeah. things like this, and it is a real phenomenon. It the, is the, the, the copycat suicide, and it's it's a, it's just making a horrible, senseless situation mm. way worse. Look, when that Chester happens. Bennington did it. You know, I mean, you yeah. know what? That's just it's weak. It's not okay. And and as we mentioned, you know, like six kids and stuff like. Not to mention just the influence and the impact on the world that he affected because he chose the career he chose. Yeah. And whilst we didn't all know him personally, we knew him uh, in a way, shape and form that is beyond a personal level. It's because we knew him from his lyrics and his insides, you right. know, from the, the songs. Right. A lot of the texts that are coming in today um, are and the phone calls we've received have been crazy yeah I mean, I, I mean just how how impactful suicide is mm-hmm. on on lives and and you know thank you to everybody that's mm-hmm. that's texting in and telling us and calling in their stories um you know some of them I, I don't I mean we appreciate the fact that people are sharing these these things with us but I don't think it's going to improve the current situation right and, you know? and we've talked about I just I want to keep hitting on these on these crisis hotlines Please. because because everybody that's listening either has felt this or knows someone that feels it now or has been in a situation uh, and there and there are people and Nuber you really hit on something super important the crisis hotlines are there and these are people that don't know you but can help you but it's having somebody in your world that you are close to that li- that lives close enough to you and i mean i mean spiritually that knows your situation right. knows your soul those are the people you need to talk to mm-hmm. but if, if you feel it like you don't have that and you just want to air it and maybe maybe you don't maybe like my situation i was scared to tell anybody i was scared i, w- I didn't want yeah. people to know i was embarrassed it was horrible yeah if you don't want to talk to somebody that you know, that's the crisis hotline right. time. Right. So text the word, uh, the number four, the word hope to 741741. We also talked about the veterans crisis hotline, which is also for everyone, but you text the number one or you, uh, you hit one. You, what's the number? Yeah, it's 1-800-273-8255 for the national, uh, crisis hotline. And if you are a veteran and want to speak to veterans, uh, and, and people specifically, uh, there to handle veterans' issues, uh, press one. Press one. It's that easy. Uh, hit us up here. Again, we are just kind of, we're just being all natural here Honest. today. Uh, Nuber and I have known each other for years, and we feel like we've known you for years and vice versa. And so we're just, you know, it's it literally is just this steamroller of, of Chris Cornell and past suicides in the music industry. And it's impactful because it's the music industry and we are affected by it. We all know people that have been impacted by personal suicide and, and all that. And, and I, I don't want to be trite, but it's important because 
you got to put it in your head. You're important. Right. You matter. Like, you matter. And you just need to know that. Sort of processing the fact that Chester Bennington committed suicide. Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Uh, a lot of people actually asking about the Cincinnati show. Clearly, that is not going to happen. Right. I would say uh, tickets to the point of purchase for a refund. I don't know all of the details on that. I mean, I'm sure that'll come out soon. Right. Um, and But now it's just the idea that, you know, uh, when we are coming off of a Chris Cornell suicide, which uh, that's still debatable on whether he was a full mind capacity. They said he had taken a little more of his meds than he should have and he wasn't acting right. His mm-hmm. wife said that she'd spoken to him earlier in the day and he didn't seem right. That's why they sent the bodyguard or whatever. Sure. The the keeper, you know. <laughs> and and we, it's so early in this. We don't know if a similar situation happened with Chess. Correct. Right. Right. Um, and and he he hung himself and and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm understanding more why you were I don't I don't think it was so much Ronnie that it was anger that you came mm-hmm. in here with. Oh yeah. But it was as much frustration. And yeah. I think I, I understand more now is that Chester Bennington had a front row seat for everything that happened after Chris's passing. Yeah. And he's still, I mean, as twisted and as, as, as sick, as ill as he was, there was still a conscious decision yeah. made. And, and trying to come to grips with that and trying to, to make logical sense of that is just, I, I think, just a futile... Uh, this is what I came on the air and said, I think it's just stupid to even try and understand this. Yeah. But I think what we can do is talk about people's emotions towards this, honestly, to help people, you know, those of us that are still here. Uh, I'm just reading these texts, by the way. Um, uh, hey, guys, I can't believe what's happened Having tried to hang myself after suffering from depression several years ago, I really appreciate this conversation you're having from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I love you guys. Um, wow, there's so many. Angered and upset by this news. Was so looking forward to seeing the band next month. Actually, we won tickets from the station. Yeah. I understand he was suffering. Um, I, I uh, Ronnie, I'm sorry I was not there for you. Ah, yeah. And I said the same thing to you, Ronnie. And I said the same thing to you. I felt so bad when you said that to me. Like I felt like I couldn't but couldn't call anybody. I felt like we've I, I've been at this station for almost thirteen years now. You know, we've had cases of beer and Jägermeister together. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you took most of the Jägermeister. But, <laughs> and 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 to to learn that that you felt like you couldn't give me a phone call. Especially when I worked at the time, 7 to midnight, I wouldn't go to bed until 4 a.m. And you couldn't make that, you didn't, for whatever reason, make that phone call. There were there were times, though, during that period, most of that time. It yeah. wasn't until I finally spoke. You were the first person I talked to yeah. about my situation. And it was just random over beers. I'll never forget it. And yeah. it just came yep. out because I was at a place where it was like, oh, I had no idea. It, it, it for a year I was I didn't know what to say I didn't I was embarrassed I was like I couldn't believe this is happening and I'm not going to get all in detail of what was my situation was but it was like wow and you do like a, a person it doesn't matter who you are mm. there a lot of people enter a place in their head where they feel like you know I there's nowhere to go yeah. I'm I'm in this dark spot and there's nowhere to go and and it's not so much that you don't want to talk to somebody you don't you just don't know how to say it. Right. You don't, you're embarrassed. You like, you don't. Right. I don't even know how to put it anymore. Um, I did mention earlier, it's like you want to talk to people, but you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want people that you know around you to know you don't you're want people suffering. judging you. Right. If yeah. you're going through a depression of any sort, you, you're embarrassed. You don't want to talk to people that know you because you don't want them to know. So we've, we've been hitting on the crisis hotlines. Uh, the crisis text line in Ohio is text the number four and the word hope to 741741. And anyone should feel free to text for hope to 741741 for help. It serves all ages, all situations. If you're somebody that's going through something and you don't want people near you that know you to know, these are the people you can talk to. In any situation, there is nothing that cannot be resolved. There is nothing you cannot work through. You got to know that. You got to know that that is something you need to talk through because taking your life is not an option. It is not an option. Um, and when we speak of a Chester Bennington, and I'm going to just speak of him as a person that affected a lot of people because of his job choice of what he did for a living. Sure. It it's like 
uh, my concern, I think my anger stemmed immediately from how many people are going to be impacted by this. They're on the edge that might think that it's okay. Right. And, it, and it's just not. Yeah. Um, we talked earlier as well about uh, a situation of somebody that I knew that committed suicide. There were clear signs that he wished he had not. He was trying to not uh, die. And yeah. there are people that said, and, and, you wonder what they're thinking at that moment. And we have his name, but I'm not going to give it out on the air. And, and he said that he tried to kill himself, was brought back. And he's like, you just don't even think about the finality of what you're doing right. in the time that you're doing it. Yeah. And and that's that's scary to think like that, but it at least makes more sense to me when you, if you and thank you to that person. I'm not going to put your name out there, but thank you to that person for sharing that because I think that's a great uh, point that most people don't think about because most people don't have to struggle with these things. Yeah, and and that's the thing, noobs. Like you, you don't realize in that situation. You don't realize that you don't have to be alone. Right. You don't realize you don't have to struggle. And take it on yourself or deal with it on your own. You don't, you don't think that way, I guess, is the only, the only thing about Chester that I understand is that you get to a place where you don't feel like you can talk to somebody, but you gotta know, I'm here to tell you that you can. You can. I mean, look at you. You're like, dude, what the hell, you know? Mm. Um, and, and you can. There are people you can talk to. Yeah. And, and I'm not a counselor, but, Damn it, call me. <laughs> you know, like, well, I, well, give out your cell phone number next hour if that's cool. I mean, you know, like there there are people that you can talk to, whether they're close to you or they're not. If you choose to talk yeah. to a stranger, there are professional people and, that can can help you. And, and back to what you said, um, and I, I again, uh, some of that I I knew, some of that I did not know. Um, but the fact that you are there for so many people, it, it selflessly constantly there for so many people for emotional support the veterans organizations and and the veterans dealing with ptsd and depression that i know whether you know that i know this or not i know that you've made 4 a.m trips across town to go help a veteran who was struggling at that moment you do this stuff selflessly and for you to tell me that you felt like you didn't have anybody that just made me incredibly sad and and I I, I I hope that and I told this to you off the air and I'll tell it to you on the air to reinforce it because I didn't want to say this on the air to uh, it appear cheap or anything like that. Right, right. Um, to call me, dude. Call me, yeah. please. Give me an excuse to to go crack open a beer and we'll talk in the middle of the night. I got no problems whatsoever in doing that. And and that and that's the thing, you know. It's like uh, I know it now. I didn't know it then. And if I did know it, it was in my crawl and it was kind of like. I didn't want I didn't want anybody that knew me to know. Right. And that and that was the issue. And I think that is the personal internal struggle. Mm -hmm. Whether that was Chester Bennington's situation or Chris Cornell's situation or anybody in mm -hmm. that situation, if that's their deal, they don't want anybody to know. Right. They're so embarrassed or mortified or feel like there's no way out. They don't want anybody to know. But at some point, if you take your life, it's all gonna get out there. Right. Everybody's exactly. gonna know and exactly. you're and you're gone. And you're gone. And and all your problems are now somebody else's. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. All right, we're going to continue to take uh, your text. You can hit us up at 99700-821-9970. Again, uh, the information coming in today that Chester Bennington uh, from Lincoln Park had committed suicide today, found in his home in California. And we're just just going through the motions and the emotions with you, whether it's sadness or anger or any of it. Hit us up. Nuber and I just uh, kind of going through all of this with you. Uh, Working and, through it. And each other. Uh, Working through it. Because yeah. it's it's been impactful today. The death of Chester Bennington by suicide comes just, you know, a month or two after losing Chris Cornell to the same way and by the same method. And yeah. uh, and, and we talked about this, like TMZ, I guess, reported that it was they were really tight and it was on his birth on Chris Cornell's birthday. We don't know really right. all the, whether that's really a direct thing or not, but but it is out there. Um but we've kind of just been talking about all of this today, the suicide thing. And I think I I've said, never I, and, and I'm not puffing our chests out here, but I don't think I've ever heard a conversation this real on PC and honest yeah. about the situation. Well, I mean, I said this to you off air and sometimes I just wish we would record when we're not on the mic. But, uh -huh. Well, um, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Um, but but I don't care. I don't care how. Uh, strong a person is. I don't yeah. care how, you know, 
uh, somebody might say, well, you know, I'm strong as nails. It does not matter. It doesn't matter how strong you are. Uh, everybody has a breaking point. Mm. And, um, and sometimes that breaking point is something that you can just take a deep breath and, and get beyond. You cross the bridge and you're like, okay, I'm cool. Everything's cool. And some people don't get there and they don't know how to get past that breaking point and they do what he has done and th- it's just horrible i think it's safe to say everybody has baggage yeah. of some and and, and 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 of some degree or another and you know to say that everybody is clean in this world i think is a is a there's anybody clean in this world i think is a false statement mm-hmm. um but it's it's a lot of it not all because I've, you know, I'm speaking as a person that's never had to deal with a horrible trauma or been in a war zone or anything like that. I, I, you know, I, I can, I can say that knowing people that have had horrible traumas, been in war zones, there are ways and things you can do that are healthier coping mechanisms than, than destructive ones. Right. That is truth. And, you know, uh, we talk about Chester and you had mentioned that he was, uh, he was a victim of uh, child abuse. Um, I believe it, he was molested. Is that yeah, what I what correct? I heard? Yeah. And so there are a lot of things that can affect a person uh, mentally later in their life, like that. And, and let's let's talk about like uh, kids and teenagers and bullying. How many kids today mm. are taking their life because they're being bullied at school yeah. and they don't feel like they can tell anybody? And when they do, maybe the bullying gets more intense for them. I'm reading some statistics here that are mind blowing. Uh, you, you just pulled this up a few moments ago. I, yeah, I, I, youth and teen suicide statistics. Each day, an average of 5,400 students in grades 7 through 12 attempt suicide. Firearms are the most common method of death by suicide. The next most common method are suffocation, 51%. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for youth aged 10 to 24. One in seven high school students have considered suicide within the past school year. One in 14 high school students have attempted suicide within the past school year. In America, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death for all ages. 90% of people who die by suicide have a diagnosable and treatable psychiatric disorder at the time of their death. And when you think about that and you think about the people that have attempted suicide or have committed suicide, and, and we're talking about this age group, this youth and teen situation, I, I, want to, I want you to hear me right now. If you are in that age group and you're thinking about it, what Chester Bennington did is not okay. No. That is not okay, and it is important that you call and you reach out. Uh, there are suicide prevention hotlines. The Columbus Suicide Hotline, 24 hours, 7 days a week, 614-221-5445. Teen Suicide Hotline, 614-294-3300. There is a senior hotline, 614 614- Two nine four three three zero nine, and the TTY is six one four two two one five four five four a four five rather, and so just know that if you are in a situation where whatever your deal is that you're you're suffering with or from, and you're embarrassed or you don't want to talk to anybody that knows you, and this is me like on a personal level. If you're embarrassed and you don't want to talk to somebody that knows you, talk to somebody from one of these crisis hotlines. Right. Because they can help you. They will figure out a way to get you through what you're going through. For hope, text the number four, the word hope, to 741741, and that is for all ages, all situations, whatever you're going through. And I think most importantly to, to point out to people, uh, just reach out to somebody. We've been saying it it doesn't have to be an ordeal hey chester bennington killed himself i want to make sure you don't do this it can be a hey you cool man hey yep. i'm bringing over food tonight you gonna be around yep it can be that easy it's uh it's it's that uh i know in the military world it's it's kind of like check on your brother yeah uh and check on your brother check on your sister <laughs> check on it, doesn't matter it's, it's the military. buddy system yeah there's nothing wrong with that yeah super important and we are getting a lot of amazing texts in today uh so very much thank you somebody brought up the word taboo and that is really the situation the word taboo Let's say, let's say this to people, Ronnie. We don't know if how we're handling this by talking about it and what we're saying is the PC medically correct thing to do. But we know for certain not talking about it doesn't help. Right, right. It so I, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're really trying to be as honest as we can. And, and Ronnie, when you came on the air and goes, I'm, I'm, I got one feeling right now. It's anger. Angry. 
super angry. And, you know, the, nobody else is going to jump on a microphone and say that, you know. And, and I felt it was incumbent upon me as your friend and your coworker. And, you know, we do have we have a lot of fun here at the station. But mm-hmm. I think we do have a responsibility. Yeah. Um, to hang out and just listen. And I, I've learned so much. And I think I feel better now about you. And I don't feel like you're as angry, as frustrated by the situation, yeah. which is perfectly natural. Yeah. That's not an unnatural response, you know? And I, I think if we can just continue to be honest about it and listen to each other, it's going to help. It's the, it's the most important thing. Oh, oh what was God. that? This is my metal water bottle that <laughs> sounds like a... Uh, it looks like a bullet. It looks like a vibrator. My God. <laughs> I, 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 I usually go with plastic, but this doesn't have the BPAs or whatever those things are, which I'm told will give me breasts, and I don't want those. <laughs> I can earn those on my own. I don't need it from a water bottle. So. Kind of needed that funny, although you could probably stick a battery in the bottom of that thing. And yeah. Throw that right over I'll there. rent it to you. All righty then. Uh, again, thank you very much for the text coming in and the honesty from our listeners today, from our family out there in, in the uh, in the world. Um, keep them coming. We're going to hang for just a little bit longer and talk about some of the situation and what you're feeling and how we're all kind of dealing with it.